when you look at this absolutely minuscule stream flowing next to me, it's hard to believe that it's packed full of fish. But so often it's these tiny waterways that provide some of the best fishing during yes. the winter months. Let's catch one. So join me as I search three of these tiny rivers for big fish and update you on what I've been up to whilst I've been quiet the last few months. I don't want to go to jail. Because it's been rather eventful. Wow. Winter is always difficult. There's fewer hours in the day, and a lot of fish stay dormant until the warmer temperatures arrive. However, in flowing water, the fish burn energy swimming against the current, meaning they'll often feed even when it's very cold. Oh, it's great to be back out here. I haven't actually been fishing for a little bit. Here we go, first cast of the day. In the tiny stream, the float is bobbing down in the current. Oh, hello. Oh, I thought I had a little nibble then. Yes. Woohoo! First fish of the day. What's it gonna be? Is that a roach? Oh no, that's a dace. That's a quality dace, that one. But yeah, that's a good start. But I know that these sorts of places hold a range of species and sometimes much, much bigger fish than that. I don't really need to be standing in the water here in this particular spot. I could have just fished it from the shore, but I really like being in the river. So the last session that I actually did, the last proper fishing trip I did was with Omi. I got invited to fish a small reservoir that I don't believe many people really know about. These two really nice guys invited me down there to try it out with them. Took the bait right in front of us. Just waiting for the big one now. I definitely quite like to go back to that reservoir at some point. Omi really enjoyed it. Yes. Oh, well done, Omi. Yes! <laughs> you got one on the lure. <laughs> that little lure. I think it's about time I find another spot. I'm going to walk upstream and see if we can find some fish over there. So we had the robin over there and just down here we now have the football. Wow. Right, now Carl, don't slip into the water please. Now you're probably wondering what on earth is this and when I first saw one I had the same question. This is actually a 360 degree camera. It's a camera that can look in all directions at the same time and I'd never seen one of these either until my friend Tom decided that he'd buy one of these, attach it to his rig and then cast it out to try and catch a fish with a 360 degree camera. So Tom actually came around my house and we rigged up a way of basically attaching this dive housing safely to a rig, like attaching your lead and your, your pop-up and whatever to it. And we headed down the canal to try and cast it out. <laughs> I don't know if this tactic's gonna catch on. It was definitely a neat idea, Tom, but it was uh, proving a little more difficult than we expected to get the bite on camera. So, we're gonna place the camera somewhere down there. Uh oh, I've got wet feet. Oh, there we go, there we go. Yep, um, my boot is full. Full full of water now, great. Oh dear, oh dear. Why am I incapable of going fishing without ending up soaking wet? I really like being in the river. Now the issue we had with the underwater carp bite 360 method thing wasn't getting carp in front of the camera like, i'm struggling today to get the dace or chub or whatever to, to sort of come back to where the camera is because they're very wary but both of us were just desperate to get that bite on camera the actual hookup tom oh it's come off it's come off there was something on. But whether a fish had got the line tangled around its fin or whether I'd actually had a proper bite. Tom, I got some bad news. Do you want to battery? Yeah. Recording has stopped due to low battery. <laughs> no, it's, it's, I think it's done. That means that we won't know whether I got it or not until we get home. We came close. Painfully, well you did. You had a bite. But was it on camera? That's the big question. Once we got back to mine and started reviewing the footage, we realized my bite wasn't actually a bite at all. A nearby feeding fish had simply got its head stuck on my line and went full send trying to get rid of it. This was absolute proof that savage liners can sometimes look like aborted takes. 
knowing what had happened only made us want to return to the canal even more. We did have quite a lot of work to do though, so we had to focus on that before we could get back down the canal. All of these bends will probably hold fish. The straight bits in between the bends, which are very shallow and fast, are probably not worth putting much time into. Hey there. Uh, yeah. Who's that? Uh, me. <laughs> What's up? Being over this river is no fly. Yeah, yeah. five kilometre exclusion zone all around the airport. I see. And obviously, the radar has picked you up. Oh, I've been so much doo doo. This I've here. just done an illegal. This, this. Despite my drone app saying otherwise, I'd somehow wandered into the UK's most patrolled no-fly zone. I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> We're not going to go there. The officer was kind, but told me to use the official CAA app in the future. But it certainly put an end to this part of the session. Um, but yeah, just make sure you download that app and check. It was kind of exciting, but at the same time, I have, I have this deep guilt that I just wasted a whole load of like police officers' time and probably like government money because of that. That said, the government wastes enough of their own money, so I shouldn't feel too guilty. Before Christmas, I wasn't actually planning on buying any presents. I don't really like Christmas presents. I don't, well, it's nice, obviously, when someone gets you a Christmas present, but I don't like the construct. I, 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 hate, I hate the pressure. So myself and Alex, we got a great deal where I get Alex nothing for Christmas, and in return, he gets me nothing for Christmas. So it's very fair and level and even, with no stress, it's great. But this year it was a little bit different. Having watched Omi work hard and save up all year to afford driving lessons, I decided to surprise her with a car, secretly leading her to it whilst pretending to go mushroom foraging. Oh, they're not there. Oh, um, I'm joking. Oh. What? <laughs> what? Happy Christmas! <laughs> Whilst I'd noticed Ollie wanted to learn to drive and sorted her out with a car, she'd noticed that I was a little bit worn out and run down and in need of a holiday. So Omi's Christmas present to me was a wonderful cabin that she'd booked up and it was absolutely perfect. You know it's a cold morning when your landing net looks like that. <laughs> it was right next to a lake that was full of carp, so that was win number one. And it also had ducks on it. And I love ducks, especially little white ones. So yeah, that trip was really nice. Also, this van is new as well. Uh, it's quite an exciting time with all these new things, but it's because my old one just gave up the ghost the other day because I crashed it into a puddle. We're floating. No. We're floating. No. I haven't actually fished this spot for about eight or nine years. It's certainly changed a little bit since then. Now, I'm not entirely sure whether I should go downstream or potentially go up underneath this bridge. There's ducks under the bridge, so I'm gonna go that way. I thought they were going to hit me on the head then. Oh, this looks great. Not so much of a small river like I was intending to fish, but it looks pretty tasty. Well, there's got to be a bite to be had down here. Look at it. At first, I struggled. Well, this is rubbish. So I switched tactics from float fishing to drop shotting with a worm. Making a cast, I stood and waited. I waited some more, and I waited some more. But then, just as I was about to give up, I got snagged and gave up. See, I don't see any fish all that time. It's, it's like jumping up the water in front of me. I'm done with this spot. It's not very peaceful, and there aren't all that many fish around. I've got one last location for today. Probably the smallest stream of all of them. Definitely, well, I mean, it's very shallow as well. But it does hold some reasonably good fish. It's surprised me before. So let's hope it does it again today. Normally when I'm filming the videos, or at least over the last few years, I've always been doing them with other people. There's been the odd one that I filmed myself, but I'll be honest, it's actually been quite nice to just have some peace and quiet time to myself. Okay, that last spot wasn't exactly relaxing with the train going over the top and the loud 
like weir pool, like waterfall noise, but it has been quite a contrast to what I've did, done, done did, for, for what I, <coughs> the other day I was at the show, uh, the um, Essex Carp Show, which was the first trade show or public event that I've done in absolutely age, probably six years. Uh, and the reason why is because crowds of people used to give me like really bad anxiety and that would sometimes develop into a panic attack. So I'd be at a show and I'd be meeting people who watched the videos and I'd be loving it, talking about fishing and then few too many people would sort of be around me at once and then my brain would just start to go to mush and I couldn't think straight. And then five, 10 minutes later, I couldn't breathe. I'd be on the floor like, ah, I'm dying. And I'd get really full of panic and fear. And I don't know, strange reaction, but apparently quite a lot of people do have panic attacks at some point during their life. Sometimes only one or two, but I was getting them every time there was lots of people around me. But because I've done a lot of work on my mental health and a lot of learning the last few years and gentle exposure to the things that used to cause me panic. I have been improving my resilience, growing. My body was learning to feel safe again rather than panicking every time you know I was on a trade or in a busy place. So I thought, let's let's do the shows again, let's give it a go. I was on the corder stand. Myself, Omi and Tom spent two days at the show and just met so many wonderful people. Like It was amazing. And I took photos of all these people. I signed their books. It always feels strange when people ask for an autograph, but what the hell? <laughs> the show was great. I loved it. I met probably 500 people or more, I don't know, it was actually really busy. It was a bit too busy for my liking, but I didn't have a panic attack and I loved it. I had, I had a great time. Oh, a squirrel. Right, this is it. <laughs> we don't have much sun left. Well, I've only walked through one field and I'm a little bit out of breath. I'm not liking how unfit I am these days. I played squash with Alex the other day. And I realised I need to do a bit more exercise, I think. <laughs> a New Year's resolution, do more exercise and get more fit. Oh dear, is this got... Woo! It might not be deep, but there's some current to that. I'm going to go upstream a little bit and then fish down there right at the end, just before it gets dark. Get them going in down there. There's no flow on this bit, really. Maybe I want to be further down where I fished in the summer. Can I stand here? I, I always worry that the ground's going to like give way and I'm going to disappear underwater. I really like being in the river. I do love a bit of float fishing though. Small river, lightweight tackle. It would just be quite nice if I caught something decent now. <laughs> I honestly wasn't expecting the day to have gone so badly. I regularly fish these little waters and always catch something decent. There was still time for a last minute bite, but I think the ice cold weather lately had perhaps taken its toll. Back at home, my koi are also feeding less and the ice has damaged the garden. It's quite bleak to be honest. The fish are doing okay though, because of the insulation that Tom and Cal helped me build in the last pond video. That said, the pond has needed some other maintenance. My dechlorinator had stopped working, so along with my friend Lee from the Pond Pro, we replaced the carbon and sorted out some other bits in the filter house. In the pond itself, the bottom drain cover had popped off and floated to the surface. Thankfully, my ever keen brother came to the rescue. What if the weights are so much that you can't get back up? I drown and die. The koi didn't seem to mind their new inhabitants. Oh, Alex, they're trying to eat you. Yeah and after filming my brother's deep sea diving masterclass, he managed to fix the bottom drain air pipe and secure the cover back in place. Great success! <laughs> we did it! I only took about 20 kilograms attached to my waist. Why are you so buoyant? Is it because your, your head is just full of, you know what? Full of air? Because I've been eating so much bread and bread is full of bubbles. He also <laughs> helped me with some housework and although I haven't fished with Alex all that much since he went to do his own channel, it was nice to spend some time with him and catch up. So thanks bro. Alright, this bit is awful. That's how it is, winter days. It gets dark quick, you just don't have much time on your hands. 
And that's exactly how it was for myself and Tom as we returned to the canal. After the last session, Tom and I were gutted that we hadn't managed to get the bite on the 360 camera, and we were desperate to get back down and try again. However, we did have a lot of work to do that week. Tom built me a new website, and we shot some new product photography to make sure all of my lovely merch was looking great. With all that done, and the new website live, it was finally time to head down the canal for another go. We'd worked really hard that week to afford some time to fish, but even so, we only had a couple of hours before we needed to head out to the Essex Carp Show. The odds were stacked against us, not helped by my amazing casting abilities. I definitely am feeling the pressure. Tom's idea to catch fish with the 360 camera was a very cool one. We've come within millimeters of making it happen, but now we're running out of time. Eventually, Tom managed to get the shot he was after. It was an awesome reward for our efforts throughout the week. Okay then, let's try and catch something. <coughs> Maggots, float down. Okay, this is it, this is it. It's getting towards where I'd imagine fish being, underneath those branches or near those reeds. All right, that's it. I'm done. Look at this. This is why we do it. Can you imagine if I had caught loads of fish? What an amazing day this could have been. I'm only messing, it's been all right. But, still got a little bit of time. Not a lot, probably enough to make a couple of casts. Oh, yes, oh, fish, yes. Come on, don't come off, don't come off. Don't snag me, don't come off or get me stuck in some branches. No. Nope. Jeez, what a scrap. I think it's a quality chub. So it'd be good to have a proper landing net pole. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, if anyone could see me right now, celebrating like this, they'd have a laugh. Look at that cracker. That is a beautiful chub to round up this day's fishing. I hope you can see it clearly and that I've got my focusing all right. Thanks so much for watching this video. And if I've got one bit of advice for you, it's don't ignore these sorts of rivers and tiny waterways. Bye.